When the Bene Elohim inherited the nations in the post Babel dispersion, is there any indication from the various texts you have studied that any of these states were founded more than, say, 2,000 miles from modern day Palestine? Yeah, so like, you know, what about China and India, North and South America, Central America, Australia, all this stuff? Uh, my answer to this is no. The biblical writers, now catch this, this is going to sound awfully simplistic, but think about it. The biblical writers wrote about the world they knew, not the one they didn't know. Okay, the language of, quote, all the earth that you read in the Old Testament is designed to be all encompassing. I mean, from the writer's perspective, when, when the writer uses phrases like heaven and earth or all the earth, it, it's everything they can see. Okay, they're, they're, they're writing it from the language of, of, of the naked eye observation, the language of experience. And because we can see that their intention was to be all encompassing, we, we can read it that way. It's just that we know that the world is truly. It's this globe that floats around in outer space. It's bigger. The world is bigger than the biblical writers knew it was. Again, that, that's just, again, part of being in a, in a pre-scientific culture. But you can't expect biblical writers to write about the world they didn't know. They wrote about the world they did know. So, again, they're just dealing with a, a smaller world. So if we, we know that the nations of the biblical world, we know what the writers were thinking when they thought about the nations. How? You know, how can you say that, Mike? Well, you go read Genesis 10. That gives you the geography that was known to the biblical writers. It lists out the nations. And, and there's nothing else, again, that's going to be beyond what is accounted for in the table of nations. You just don't have that anywhere in the Bible. But again, because we know their intent with their language was to be all-encompassing, you know, all of the nations God had created, all of the places that, that are here, you know, that, that humans experience. Since we know, again, the intent was to be all-encompassing, I think it, it's legitimate for us to read it that way uh, as far as, again, what they were intending to communicate. If God's the creator of heaven and earth, that means that God is the creator of all material reality. It doesn't mean that the biblical writers knew about that. They didn't know about atoms. They didn't know about quanta. They didn't know about all this stuff. But yet the, their language shows us that they're trying to, to get everything in the box. They're trying to be thorough and comprehensive. And so I think it's, it's fine to read it that way, but we have to realize you know, what, you know, what's going on in the text and in their head you know, when they do that. So you know, th this, this goes to the whole situation. I, I think we basically create reading problems when we filter biblical content through our own modern science and our own modern worldview. Because you, you get creationists that just stumble all over themselves, to, you know, to get these other nations somewhere in the Bible.